so today we have a uh, proximal phalanx fracture in a right hand of a male uh, patient. So we've simulated a fracture in the metacarpal neck, and today we're going to demonstrate the triangular plate. Um, its usage is uh, interesting because this uh, plate can be used in many different places, especially for periarticular uh, fractures. Um, the benefit of it is that it uh, conforms nicely to a lot of different surfaces uh, in and around the joint and gives you multiple different hole locations to put screws in, especially for more, more accommodated fractures. I just want to show the plate cutter. Uh, it is a nice uh, plate cutter that makes a very smooth cut. There are different uh, places to put the plate. So for example, the first peg here is for the 1.4 plate. The second peg here is for the 1.6 and the 2.0 plates. And the third peg here is for the 2.0. So here, maybe we'll cut off about three holes just for demonstration purposes. And um, you'll, you'll notice that this makes a very easy cut. So if you notice that the plate cutter makes a beautiful cut, a round cut, and the edges uh, that uh, it makes are relatively smooth. If you feel, feel it with your fingers and it's still a little bit rough, you can use the, the uh, file that's on the side of your plate cutter. And you can go ahead and make the any edges that you might feel even smoother. Like most of our fractures, we're going to go ahead and put this on where we like it. And you can notice right from the get-go without any uh, contouring or of any kind that the shape of this triangular plate already fits very nicely onto the distal aspect of the proximal phalanx. I'm going to take this BB tack and make some and hold this provisionally with the BB tack. So I'm going to put another BB tack in distally here. Uh, of note, the BB tack is a 1.1 uh, millimeter thickness, which is actually also the same size as the drill you're going to use. So obviously, you can go ahead and use the same hole to put in your screw at the same time. This is the 1.1 millimeter drill. You see there's a nice black laser line on it that corresponds and allows you to measure directly off of your drill guide and saves you a step uh, if you'd like to go ahead and measure directly here as, as opposed to using a separate step with the uh, depth gauge. And of course, if you're not sure, if you're more comfortable using a depth gauge, there's a beautiful depth gauge on the set as well. So at this point, I've gone through the first, first cortex. I'm up against the second cortex. I can clearly see that my laser line is at about eight millimeters or so. So at this point, I'll go ahead and come through the second cortex. And uh, if I measured eight with that cortex, I'm okay putting on a 10 millimeter screw. However, there's a very nice and smooth uh, depth gauge that's in the set as well. It's very intuitive to use. Um, and you can notice that my measurement here is somewhere around nine or 10 millimeters. So that does correspond with what we measured directly off the drill guide. The other thing I wanna show is uh, the screw, the actual set. Um, if you put your fingers over this, the tops of the screws and you feel that they're all level, then um, this is what we call stadium seating. So only the screw that fits that hole will actually be able to, uh, will be able to fit nicely in that slot. The second thing I wanna show is how nice the screwdriver and the locking, uh, the mechanism is to hold the screw in. So anyway, I'm gonna put this in for a 10 and go ahead and put the locking mechanism down on it. You're gonna feel a beautiful, nice, positive click to it. Um, so you can see how stable this is right from the get go. Um, and I didn't have to do anything additionally just as, as, uh, than to just put the sleeve right over it. The sleeve has a spring-loaded mechanism and is a very positive and direct click uh, that you feel. Once you do it, you do not need to do any additional pushing in or tightening with your fingers, which may obviously allow the screw to come off. There are different screw drivers in the set that will hopefully appeal to just about any hand surgeon. You also notice how easily the retaining screw comes off and it, it allows this to do this all in one step. So I'm gonna put one distally. I just wanna show the variable angle part of this. So I'm gonna aim a little bit more proximally uh, just to make sure I'm away from the joint. Same thing here. I kind of feel the other cortex and I'm about at a 10. So I'll probably be okay with either 11 or 12 screw. These are, this is gonna be a locking screw that I'm gonna put in. So obviously I don't need to necessarily go that much past the cortex or even just up to it. So then obviously we'll repeat this process to drill, measure, and put the appropriate size screw in until you feel like you've had uh, enough fixation uh, for your fracture pattern.
So, so my post-op protocol is depends on how accommodated the fracture is and uh, how stable a fixation that I get. So in general, as, as we all know, that the earlier we can get range of motion going on, especially with proximal phalanx fractures, uh, the better. So after uh, about a one to two week period of time as the skin is healed, if the fracture is stable enough, I'll start them early range of motion. Uh, if not, I will wait even up to three, four, six weeks or so, depending on how stable that fracture actually is.